There are three books in my entire life that I have stopped reading out of sheer disgust. Uh, the first was 1984 by George Orwell. The second was a completely terrible chiclet murder mystery. And the third is now Twilight. And the reason I've stopped reading Twilight at the end of Chapter 8 is because there's no fun in it. It's not interesting to me on a legitimate level. It's not funny to me on an ironic level. It's not a beautiful train wreck of epic proportions that somehow wins me over in the end. And it's not even so bad it's good. And the shock value has worn off. The, the epic terribleness of this book has completely felled any interest I have in actually getting to the end of it. I don't care. Bella is not a character. She's a caricature. Edward's not even a caricature. He's just good looking. Their relationship is completely unhealthy. The ideas that this book promotes to teenage girls is disturbing. This book tells you that if a boy doesn't pay any attention to you, don't worry, he will. This book tells you if a boy does pay attention to you, he's after something, so you shouldn't pay attention to him. This book tells you if a boy tells you that he's bad for you and that you shouldn't be around him, you should ignore that because in your heart you know he's a sweetheart. This book tells you that if a guy you barely know drags you across the parking lot by your jacket, that's okay. If a guy you're not even yet dating is saving you from an almost violent attack and then is mad that you should calm him down before he asks if you're okay. And then when he does ask if you're okay, tell him it's alright because you're good at repressing things. Because, of course, what's the use of being a woman if you can't repress what you're actually feeling because it would probably make him uncomfortable? There's a moment in the book where Bella tells Mike that her paper on Macbeth is about whether or not Shakespeare wrote his character, his female characters from a misogynistic angle. This is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Meyer writing that line for Bella smacks is such an obvious attempt that people ignore the misogyny in her book because she knows other people have been accused of it. Her book can't possibly be misogynistic because her character recognizes that trait in other writers, but not apparently in the dude she wants to hump. Edward is violent, he's angry, he has vicious mood swings, he treats Bella like property, and there's nothing about that that's okay. And if you read this book and you really felt that you needed an Edward of your own, if you read this book and you really felt that he was the one for you for the rest of your life, you have legitimate psychological problems. I'm not being hyperbolic. He's a douche. He's a violent, scary, dangerous douche, and there's nothing about Edward that should be remotely attractive. I don't care how good-looking he is. And I want to be very clear on this. I didn't start reading this book thinking, oh, I'm gonna hate it, it'll be great. I started reading this book going, it can't possibly be as bad as everything I've heard. It's probably a delicious train wreck. I'm gonna laugh a lot at the bad dialogue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy it on the same level that I enjoy, enjoy a Harley Quinn romance novel. I'll grin a lot, I'll have a giggle. I'll roll my eyes at some of the ridiculousness and move on. And I can't finish it because the themes and the ideas and the stereotypes it promotes disgust me. But as long as I'm not finishing it, it'll give me time to reread a bunch of books I do like because I feel that they're better written and better plotted and have better characters. And I'm going to tell you what they are. First and foremost, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen because... Meyer makes a point of saying that this, it's one of Bella's favorite books, and just so we're clear, Bella is not Lizzie, and Edward is not Darcy. Edward is, at the very best, George Wickham. And in case you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, George Wickham's a douche. Um, I want to read about positive images for teenage girls. Just as long as we're together by Judy Bloom. Because it's about three teenage girls trying to be friends, even as seventh grade shows up and messes everything up. If I want to read about people playing baseball against supernatural creatures, I read Summerland by Michael Chabon, which, for the record, also makes better use of the folklore it puts to work here than Meyer did of vampire folklore. If I want to read about 
an insecure but honestly decent female character. I'm going to read Alan Tibbetts by Beverly Cleary. If I want to read about a female character that grows on you simply for sheer personality, I'm going to read Ramona the Pest by Beverly Cleary and all the rest in the series, which I do still own. If I want to read about girls being brave and interesting and overcoming odds, I'm going to read Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. If I want to read about a girl feeling awkward in a new school and wanting to make new friends and being a little weird about it, I'm going to read Silver by Norma Fox Mazur. If I want to read about a woman trying to figure out who she is in the day-to-day -day world and having some trouble with it, I'm going to read The Veil Jar by Sylvia Plath. If I want to read about female characters discovering what it is to grow up and become women in strange circumstances, I'm going to read The Poison Wood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. If I want to read something vaguely trashy, as we all do from time to time, something melodramatic with a lot of ridiculousness uh, thrown in for sheer drama, I'm going to read White Oleander by Janet Fitch. If I want to read about a group of people who are having a weird supernatural experience that includes vampires and it includes violence, um, I'm going to read Preacher by Garth Ennis, and I will actually put this with a disclaimer. This is a beautifully disgusting comic book. Um, it does have a vampire. His name is Cassidy. He's a douche. The difference between he and Edward is that Cassidy is an interesting douche. I don't want to date Cassidy. I don't want to have sex with Cassidy. I want to have a beer with Cassidy. I want to set Edward on fire. Just so you have a good understanding of where that line is. If I want to read about a female character who's gone through something horrible and is trying to recover and is trying to figure out what it is to be herself in these circumstances, I'm going to read Alias by Brian Michael Bendis. Um, not a lot of violence, quite a bit of swearing. This is the uh, Max line from Marvel. It's for the grown-ups, so if you're 14, probably don't want to read that one. If I want to read about kind of a fantasy idea of supernatural things becoming commonplace. I'm going to read Fables by Bill Willingham. Um, a bunch of fairy tales have lived in New York for the last 400 years secretly. Um, and they have their own community. Which is, I think, kind of the idea Meyer was going for with the Collins. I didn't get far enough to find out if I cared or not. And then finally, if I want to read about a group of people making questionable decisions because they think what they're doing is the right thing. If I want to read about a group of people watching the world become something they weren't expecting, I'm going to read Watchmen by Alan Moore. And at this point, you're probably going, oh, you're just a big literary snob and you're just recommending things that other people say are cool and you don't understand how awesome Twilight is. Well, I'm probably not going to talk to you anyway. So... What do I care?